Today's hearing is entitled Fostering Financial Innovation, How the Agencies Can Leverage Technology to Shape the Future of Financial Services. And the story of America is about technological innovation and the application of the American work ethic and capital over our 250-year history. Steam, rail, telephone, air, radio, television, fission, IT, the chip, all these things, vaccines, all are because we allow innovation we facilitated in our society. Today, new and emerging technologies like digital assets, distributed ledgers, quantum computing, and greater use of artificial intelligence are dominating discussion. We have to remind ourselves that innovation has always been at the heart, too, for financial services. In fact, financial technology, or fintech as we call it, is hardly new. With the advent of the credit card in 1950, the first ATM in 1967, the first electronic securities exchange in 1971, computer-based access to bank accounts in the 80s, and peer-to-peer -peer payments in the 90s, innovation has always been transforming our relationship between consumers, businesses, and their financial service provider and their money. But today we want to talk about how government agencies, while they're not at the forefront of innovation frequently, they definitely can stop innovation dead in its tracks. We recall President Reagan's very fond uh, conversation about what he thinks government thinks of the economy. If it moves, tax it. If it keeps moving, regulate it. And if it stops moving, subsidize it. And that's the challenge we always have in here in Congress, is making sure that we facilitate innovation, that we work with our regulators to do that. Over the years, Congress has added ombudsmen in agencies just to represent the people that are regulated, to make sure they get a fair shake. We've added cost-benefit analysis through the Administrative Procedures Act to make sure that the rules that are pronounced actually make sense and have some common sense associated with it. And of course, we apply our oversight capability, which we're doing today. So it was only a few years ago that some of your agencies began establishing specific offices dedicated to facilitating responsible innovation. And many of you lead those offices at your respective agencies. This, is the hearing, this hearing is the first time that the committee has called each of you to testify about your agency's work related to innovation. And regret, regrettably, when I look at the Government Accountability Office uh, recent report, uh, maybe some of that progress is lacking, so we'll have a good discussion about that today. Let me recap cap some of the actions taken by President Biden's regulators. The Fed announced a novel activity supervision program in August for enhanced supervision on new activities related to fintech and digital assets. The NCUA established its Office of, office of Financial Technology and Access in January of this year, while the office is engaging with stakeholders and hosting public presentations, it's yet to establish a workforce planning process to ensure the staff have the knowledge and skills necessary to carry out its mission over FinTech. The CFPB's Office of Innovation was founded in 2018 to encourage consumer-friendly innovation, but was replaced in 2022 by the Office of Competition and Innovation, and two of the most innovation-forward policies that had been previously established were discontinued. The OCC, the earliest regulator to establish an innovation office back in 2016, but the office was dissolved into the Office of Financial Technology in March, and the individual who reportedly lied about his extensive industry experience and education was placed at the helm. So maybe we should have some oversight of that too. I look forward to the discussion today, and I yield uh, uh, to the ranking member uh, five minutes for an opening statement. 